historically, there were a lot of taboos around talking about a sexual assault. So many women kept it to themselves in Gen X and in boomer generations. This was just considered to be part of life as a girl in America. People still don't understand the nature of traumatic memories. It's normal to have fragmentary memories of any experience. But when we focus in on a traumatic experience and now where people's careers or going to prison is at stake, uh, people get really worked up about people missing parts of their memory and they use that to attack people. So that's one fear that people have, that they won't be believed because they don't have this perfect memory and everything's there and it's gonna stand up to like a repeated cross-examination. One of the extraordinary things about sexual assault is that a lot of people who are sexually assaulted don't know that they're sexually assaulted. You had an experience that someplace on the range of bad sexual experience to rape. You didn't really talk about it, didn't tell anybody. And then six months later, you went to a you know, consciousness raising course or a feminist group meeting or something like that. And you told this story and the people around you said that was rape. And now things get really dicey. There's so much stigma and shame and potentially blame that get attached to being a rape victim or being a sexual assault survivor. They feel maybe I was wearing the wrong thing or I led this guy on. I did say no, but maybe it was too late in the course of action. They don't tell anyone because they don't think it's going to do them any good. And it's just going to be upsetting or it's just going to cause problems. And then, of course, if the perpetrator is someone powerful, then they have really good reason to fear that nothing good will come of reporting the assault, that they will come under a very strong attack from all quarters. <laughs> 